Hi, in this short video I'm going to demonstrate how to use Transum to look at a problem with a small website with a database backend. The system we're going to look at is TMS. So let's have a look at the details of the problem. It's a simple workflow system that we use at Advance 7. It has a user browser, web server and database as the main components. The system will display a list of work items in a queue and these work items are called tickets and if you click on one of these tickets it will take less than a second to display the detail. So the problem we have is intermittently the user experiences a response time of greater than five seconds. So I can actually show you this problem occurring. If we just watch this short video so you can see as we click on each item, it opens almost instantly. And now we come to this one, and if you look up in the top, top left hand corner here, you can see it's showing us connecting. And then we get the detail, and uh, that takes about six seconds. Here I'm just sending a, a ping marker just to mark uh, immediately after the problem occurred. Okay, so that's the problem that we're investigating. Here's the system, very simple, a single Linux uh, system with an Apache HTTPD server running a, a PHP based application. Then we have a database server serving up the variable uh, data content and we have two traces running. One is running against port 80 for the web server and the other is running against port 5432 which is the port for the database. This particular database is uh, PostgreSQL. It doesn't really matter that much actually, it could be any database. You'll, you can use Transum in exactly the same way for say Microsoft SQL or Oracle databases. So I've started Wireshark here with um, Transum loaded and let's just take the two trace files and we'll drag them in so that they're merged. Now because they're both been captured on one Linux machine the timestamps obviously are synchronized because it's all on a common clock which is very useful for us. So here's the uh, the traffic. I'm going to put in a filter. In fact I prepared one earlier. Let's use that. So this filter is just filtering everything to and from port 80, everything to, to and from port 5432, which is the database server. Uh, I'm just picking uh, packets that contain data by specifying a TCP length of greater than zero. But in case we have any delays in the session connection setup, I've also specified TCP flags sin equals one. So that's the trace expression. So let's supply that. Um, I've already created a profile that uh, shows APDU response time, service time, request spread and response spread, which are the, um, if you've looked at the background notes to Transum, you'll understand the meaning of those. And now it's quite simple that I can double click, which puts things in reverse APDU response time order. And you can see that here we have a six second response time for something called get ticket and with a with a ticket number now if we go back to our let's just have a quick look at the scenario again this is a slightly shortened version of the scenario Now you can see up here in the uh, URL line, it says ticket view PHP, ticket number 51129. So let's go back to our trace and sure enough, ticket view, ticket number 51129. So we've, we've got the right one. And if I go and check the ping markers as well, I'll know I have the, uh, the, right, uh, the right example of the problem. Now immediately after this, you can see there's a six second response time from the database. Um, so there's no, no significant spread values involved here, so this truly looks like a, 
a problem with uh, database service time. Now the question is, does this request, this database request, actually relate to this web service request in the front end? Well, if we look down here in the in this area, we can see that this is a database select from a table called activity where ticket number equals 53129. So that's a pretty good indication that that's the problem that we have. So let's now reorder back into uh, the natural order of the packets. Here's our six second response time for the um, HTTP request. And if I just scroll down a bit further, you can see that there are lots of other requests that are going on to the database. So these are all going backwards and forwards to 5432, port 5432. And here's the database request that we identified as being the cause of our problem. And then shortly after that completes, we see that we do indeed get the response going back to our PC that's actually delivering the data. So that's just a quick indication of what you can do with uh, Transum. I'll try and post some more examples um, at, at another time, but uh, I encourage you to try it and have fun. I'll see you soon.